Hey, and welcome back to another episode. So this is something I've been lean, meaning to do for quite a while, and that is attempt to measure bump steer. Now, before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and make a disclaimer. I, this is all very new to me, and I'm, uh, I'm kind of learning as I go. I believe I have a lot of it figured out. However, some of my math might not be perfect, or my methods, and so uh, if you look at what I do, get your own ideas of maybe how to approach it, but you're still going to need to do your own research, um, particularly due to also being, we all use different parts in our cars, you know, there's different conditions, we might not get the exact same results based on that, and it might take different things to fix it, or how far you're willing to go to fix it. So what I'm going to do with this episode is I'm going to get sort of uh, give you sort of an approach to how to take some readings. Um, I'm actually going to have to revisit this later as I get new parts in uh, because with these bump steer gauges as it goes you'll need to continue um, uh, measuring as you make modifications. So to get started you know before we get too far into this I'm going to give you a quick uh, explanation of, of bump steer. And you know I'm going to put links in the description below that's going to cover a lot more. Um, as I said, do do your own research. Don't take anyone's word on the internet for it. Look at you know legitimate articles. There's plenty of books on the subject. There's a lot of chassis engineering books. Um, a lot of really really smart, educated guys on the subject out there, and they are spreading information. But you want to make sure you get you get what you are looking for because I've seen people post in forums, and they'll argue over contradictions based on who believes what is what, and then someone will come along with actual evidence of what the actual uh, resolve is for the situation. So, uh, to get into it, bump steer is essentially, as you go through the travel of your suspension, it creates a change that will cause the vehicle to tow in or tow out. Um, and the reason this is a problem is because you're getting extra st steering input that you're not giving directly. So it creates a little bit of unpredictability. Um, it can conflict with your, your turning. And uh, they say it can be a bigger problem uh, as far as setting up a, a chassis for racing. Um, but you have conditions of toe in and toe out. And it's not necessarily going to both go in and go out because, say, you hit a bump on one side or you're compressing, uh, extending on the other side based on taking a sharp turn. You're going to get different instances of bump on both sides. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go out to the garage, I'm going to show you preparation for how to set everything up, um, and then I'm going to take readings from a stock height through three inches of travel. And the reason I'm doing that right now, I'd actually plan to do a lot more uh, for different heights, but I'm not able to get that much travel out of the stock strut. And so once I get the new culvers in, I'll be able to change the height change uh, and take readings based off of that and then I can actually start fine-tuning so we're not actually looking to resolve anything in this episode we're just looking at approaches for trying to find if a problem exists and then we can start looking at solutions for the problem so to prepare for taking readings we have to do a few things first so what I'm doing here is Removing the sway bar link, and that's one of the first things to do. And one thing I never noticed before, showing on video, I never realized there was a spot for an Allen wrench to fit inside the screw and just take it out. That probably saved from having to buy new ones. So I'll go ahead and take this out. Another thing you need to do, you actually need to remove the spring from the start assembly. And this is the stock assembly. And I've taken out the bump stop and the spring. And the only reason I've taken out the bump stop is when I, at full compression that I want for my ride height, I did not know if there would be interference. Um, I would have rather left it on there just in case something could fall on and I needed sort of a buffer uh, for this to land on. But I don't think it's going to be an issue. I mean, if support everything with jack stands and all that, I'm not really too concerned. But you have to take out all your resistance here, and it just makes things easier um, when you're trying to take your readings. And we've also taken off the brake calipers. Um, I find that paint cans are the perfect height for laying brake calipers on. 
they allow me to uh, not have to take the lines off and they, they give me plenty of room to work with. Another part of the preparation is keeping the steering wheel straight. So we're doing the alignment, I gotta set the toe, and with the stock suspension that's the only thing I can set unless I make some modifications like camber bolts or top plates. Right now we're trying to get everything from a stock alignment and go from there. So I'm gonna set up the toe, and part of what needs to be done is you need to lock the steering wheel in place. And this was a handy little gadget off of Amazon. Uh, that's the best price I'd found it was uh, on there. You may find it for another price somewhere else. I think it was like 35 bucks. Uh, but it, it's dual function. It holds the steering wheel straight. Um, and it seems to lock it pretty well. And it also has another attachment to where you can actually depress the gas pedal and whatnot, brake pedal, whatever you need to do uh, for doing any kind of work along with that. All right, everything's set. Got everything zeroed and leveled. So now we're going to start working through the travel. When it's moving to the left like that, it actually is showing toe in. And I've noticed as I go through this that the first half inch has more bump than a full inch. So here's one inch, and it's right around 30 in. So let's go to two inches. Notice it's actually going back to zero, and it's beginning, I believe, to go to a toe out condition. Yep. So at one and a half inches, we're already at over 10. And it's climbing pretty quickly now. So that's just the sway bar knocking this over. Looks like we're about 50 on tow out once we hit two inches. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to reach three inches. I'm going to get as close as I can. It's continuing the tow out. It's one full revolution, uh, right about at two and a half inches. taken this reading a couple times before as I was trying to get practice with this plate and it was the same condition every time. It starts with toe in and then turns to toe out condition. Um, so perhaps maybe once the car is lowered you only, you're only going to encounter uh, toe out. Um, that will have to be a later test once I have the other suspension in here. Well, this gives us an idea so far uh, of where we're at with stock settings. Through the travel and then what we can do, let me triple check this just because the yeah, it doesn't hinge it hardly. Making sure that's level. So that would make it one, that's just three points off, but still. So all right, now that we've got our reading, we're gonna take this data, go inside. I'm gonna go over a little bit uh, of how this is gonna calculate, and then we'll talk about some future plans with how this is gonna work. All this in the uh, on the blog, and I'll put links in the description. And I'm going to put links to a lot of stuff on the blog. So for you to continue doing research on this and, and figure out your own approach or what you think on the subject, um, you'll be able to follow that and kind of do further reading. Um, so what we have here, I went ahead and added half an inch uh, to my test, largely because at half an inch we actually had more toe in than we did at one inch. So what occurred here is we towed in, and then it came back, and then as we continued to, through compression, we actually became a tow-out situation, and it continued uh, by three inches. It was, it was quite a bit compared to the rest of it. Um, and I have done some math here. I don't, you know, it's my first time attempting these, these problems. The data seems to add up. But if you want to do your own calculations, 
come to your own conclusions uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you what you think on the math um, I've got the calculations here which is from one of the articles um, and I, I taken the numbers multiplied them or first you, you divide the the width of the tire or not the width of the tire the, the diameter of the tire with the uh, between the width of the dials and then you multiply that times your reading this number here is actually not that. I took the number and I put it in a uh, toe angle calculator. And this was to give us the the toe degree. So, you know, I, I need to read up a little bit more on what these results are going to mean. But that gives us, gives us an idea. Um, these are just, this document is just compiled by my notes. And, and a lot of this stuff I'm going to put on the blog now. Uh, some of it will save for later. The, the other thing I, I wanted to touch on. I've been talking to Racer X about actually building a uh, adjustable lower control arm that allows you to add caster, uh, adjust track width, and have an extended ball joint belt into it, uh, and that's for Roll Center. And I'm not going to touch on explaining it so much. I'll, I'll show a couple examples. Uh, but what I did to sort of get a baseline of some of my data, I've got drawings that I'll post links to as well. Uh, that Adrian had the, another. Uh, it was a front wheel drive guy. Who was a road racer, and he took, he plotted the front suspension um, for a GT. So it's actually going to be the same as the the Alltrex front suspension. So that might be a good source of some of this data. But what I did is I, I went ahead and put the the lower control arm is my zero point for my angle, and I'd measure the angle of the axle and the measure the angle of the tie rod, and I did that for the other heights. So I went to one inch, and then I went to goal, which is going to be the the 1.9 um, inches so you can see it changed quite a bit and I'm gonna try to plug this data in and see what it what it comes up with and see if that kinda helps uh, the dimensions of this lower arm uh, it may not matter but this might be helpful in researching that and so what we've got here uh, this drawing right here it actually plots all the different arm movements. So we've got the red is the the factory height, um, the blue would be the height that teen suggests, and the green would be the uh, the 1.9 inches. So that gives you an idea of the change um, at the different heights. And I also did a little uh, drawing here. Uh, this would be sort of an example of the stock arms uh, at the angles they would be. And this is to show you what happens once you uh, lower the car. The chassis will come down as you shorten the strut. And so it causes these arms to point up. And this is sort of what it might look like corrected. So you've got the arms still pointing up, but then if you add the, the extended ball joint. Uh, this is exaggerated, and this is probably not accurate at all, but it just gives you an idea that you're moving this arm back down. And the reason that matters, um, I've got these other two drawings here to show an example of that. So, say you don't modify the lower arm, you keep the ball joint and everything the same. Oh, sorry, is this drawing? Uh, and what happens is you get this arm going down lower, and you have this pivot point here. And the whole point of this, or this is this is part of the the reasoning for this uh, modification, is that you your camber gain. Um, when the arms like this, what you can have uh, on compression is you can actually have positive camber, and that's not going to help you. Um, if anything, no camber change or a little bit of camber being added is the goal. However, if you go too far, you can add too much camber, which is also a problem. So, and this is just to show you an example of the corrected arm and how it would be if it was higher and how it rolls out. Now, this, this is not a perfect illustration, but this is just to kind of give you a general glimpse of how it works. Uh, but like I said, if you guys, you know, I'm, I'm still learning as I go. I'm trying to pick all this up. I'm trying to read a lot of material, uh, some books, watch all these videos. And I'll put links to a lot of this material on the blog, um, which you can follow below. But, you know, if you guys have any suggestions, if you have any knowledge on the subject, uh, please share in the comments. You know, let's start a dialogue on this or post in the forums. And let's kind of help each other as a community develop these ideas and, and grow and try to make these cars faster and, and deal better with, you know, competition and even just being great road cars so again thanks for watching uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for future episodes as we dive into this deeper take care